Currently, China is speaking to attain both domestic market dominance and global leadership in a wide range of advanced technologies such as AI, communications, optics, and any number of fields related up to defense. In pursuit of this overarching objective, China has the lead undertaken major effect efforts, including the control also, including the control vessels made in China two thousand and twenty five industrial plan that has pro market in two thousand and fifteen. The, the intent of this ambitious strategic initiative produced under the leadership of China Premier Li Qingguang was to migrate the country from its positions as a supply of sheep and low-skilled labor to a position of designing and creating high-value add goods and services in cutting edge technologies that would per summable dominate the future global economy. It is as it is an aggressive program that was and is aggressive aggressive by the state and does not take its cool from market signal. Its directional and funding come directly from government's mandates produced by public buriket. A key goal of this made in China 2025 initiative is to increase the dominant domestic content of China made or assembly good to 40 percent by 20 40 percent by 2020 and 70 percent by 2025. This will pertain to produce in high-tech sections such as green energy process for example, solar power, outer space, paramedicals, para pharmaceutical, pharmaceuticals, automobiles, including electric e vehicle, com communication, IT in general, artificial intelligence, AI, and robotics and other critical industry, which at the present time in China are dominated by foreign suppliers who have a technology lead over national incumbents. According to the report, the government has committed over 300 billion in public funding to the program with a goal to supplant, with a goal to supplant the United States state as the world leading technology manufacturing nation of 2025. M much of this is target to subsidize the research and development development and the outlay which are usually necessary to enable major technology breakthroughs and which in market economics typically are supplied only from risk capital provided by private sector interests who seek profit. In a sense, the Made in China 2025 program and extensions of its earlier indigenous innovation policy is designed to create a new Silicon Valley, but to do so, but to do so under the direct guidance of the state, under the direct guidance 
of the state and with the risk and return to become burned by the state for its own political purpose. This appear to be a key reason with the Trump administration in its current trade war with China. This demanding an end to this program as the conditions for tariff relief. However, some have commented that China has no intentions of backtracking on such important program and that its commitment to Xi'an is not credible. credible. China's industrial policy thus will deploy massive market destroying subsidy and provide other form of financial support for target domestic industry. But as we have seen in the past, but as we have seen in the past, such policy can generate the epi, epi phenomena, epi phenomena of self Sobo and persistent excess, excess production capacity. This is turn can render serious damage to global economy, not only through direct export from China by the subsidy industry, but also because lower global price stemming from the gut of supply make it difficult for even the most efficient competi com competing producers, producer to remain viable. This is what has of late occurred in the international steel, aluminum, and solar panel sections and no doubt has made but both management a labor leader in affected industry firm and to ASTIC, supported of the Trump administration's own nationalist American first economic policy which are uh, themselves underlying the Britain Woods system at this time. It should be quite a little historical uh, hindsight to realize that similar bargain tie neighbor economic sentiment economic sentiment are what help drive nation to war and destructions in day of great power policy. USTR report on China and the two on February February to when the egg two thousand two thousand eighteen Mr Robert Robert Lightenser's the current U.S. Trade Representative USTR, who has long been concerned with and proposed to China non-market economic policies, issues President Trump trade policy agenda, an annual report, outlining how the administration is promoting free, free, fair, and reciprocal trade, and strongly enforcing U.S. trade wars. Uh, U.S. trade laws. Among other issues, the report note that notes is how the USTR is responding to unfair trade practice, including defending U.S. rights and trade remedy law laws before the WHO and the U.S. trade agreements, as settling that. China is not a market economy and does not have the right to engage in government interference and interventions in the market mechanism, destroying the market outcome and undermining the WHO rules without consequence. In June 2018, the White House Officer of Trade and Manufacturing Policies issue a scattering report stating how China has pursued a variety of unreasonable actions that harm U.S. intellectual property or IP rights, innovation, and technology development. These type of policies and practice injure not just 
not only the United States but also all the WHO members. Moreover, the report note that China continued to benefit asymmetrically from its WHO membership. That country is now the world's largest automotive market, the world's largest oil importer, the world's largest steel manufacturer, and the world's largest meat consumer. The report first note that while China undoubtedly struggled with the poverty, uh, poverty related a challenge in some area of its country economy, especially the rural architectural agricultural rural agricultural sector. The claim that it is a development country on pair of a major on pair with many other such as these located in sub Southern Africa and therefore should be exempt from a bidding by or contributing to progressive liberalizations of global trade rules. It is simple it is is simply not credible. But when measured against numerous indications of China's rapid development and accumulations of wealth over the past 30 years. Indeed, many economists now fear that China is falling into the middle income trap, a position highly compatible with the state of a poor nation. Since joining the WHO in 2004, China has repeatedly signaled that it is pursuing economic reform. However, its use, however, its use of the term reform differs from the type and the kind of reform that country would be pursuing where it is embracing market-oriented principles. For China, economic reform typically implies perfecting the government's and the CCP management of the economy and strengthening, strengthening the sec state sector. Particularly SOEs who employ a large number of people so as to maintain its legitimacy as part of the social contract that a party improves on the country in 1949, when Mao revolution succeeds, is in a sense China citizens will enjoy economic development and rising standard of living, but they would attain this benefit only in the absence of full political participation, political decisions, and outcome remain the pro will of the party, not an electorate in any real sense in that term and, dem and democratic process that is implied. As long as China remain on this part, we would assess the probabilities for the WHO to convince the China to reform its economic policy remain problematic. China respond to criticisms about its trade disruptive economics model is to assess that China strictly adheres to its WHO obligations hold itself out as a model for ultra WHO member to emulate and assess that is firmly observe and uphold the WHO rule and support the multi lateral trading system that is open, transparency, inclusive, and non-discriminatory. Many, however, disagree. The aforementioned, the aforementioned, the aforementioned 
2017 USTR report that note report note that China has agreed to revise hundreds of laws, regulations, and other measures to bring that nation into conformity with its WSO obligations, as required by the terms set forth in its protocol of accession. The U.S. policy makers hope that this term was dismantled, dismantled existing state lead policy and practice that were incompatible with an international trading system expressly based on open, market-oriented policy and roof in principle of non-discrimination. Market access reciprocity, fairness, and transparency. But those hope are dashed and repeatedly repeatedly. So China rockly remain a state lead economic today and the United States and other trading partner continue to encounter a serious problem with China trade regime. Meanwhile, China has used the impi measure of the WHO membership to become a dominant player in international trade. And given this fact, as we have suggested repeatedly, repeatedly above, in retros in retrospect, it now seems clear that the US urge in supporting China entry into the WHO on term that has proven to be ineffective in securing China embrace of an open market oriented trade region regime. Today, almost two decades after its plug to support the multi uh, lateral trading system of the WHO, China uh, pursue, pursue a wide array of continuity evolving interventionist policies and practice aimed at limited market access for import goods and services from foreign suppliers. At the same time, China offer substantial government guidance, resource, and regulatory support to Chinese industry, including initiatives designed to, ex to extract advanced technology from foreign companies in sectors across the company as a requirement for those firms to gain ac access to the last local market. The principal benefits benefit beneficiary of China policies and practice are Chinese SEO and other significant domestic companies attempt to move up the economic evolution. The USTR report note note report the USTR report note that this situation is worse today than it was five years ago. While some of these legal chains are related and related economic reform that China made in this year immediately following in the WHO accession offer the potential for a fuller embrace of market principle. For example, um, there was a design reduction in tariff barrier for export to the country. Over the time, over time, this effort stalled, despite Chinese pronouncement to the contra contrary, the state role in the economics has increased, as have breed and deep of concern facing U.S. and other foreigners companies seeking to do business in China or attempting to complete with fairer Chinese company in their home market. Since China's accessions to the WHO 
and after current Trump administration and US, US United States has repeatedly attempted to work with China in a collaborative and constructive manner, using intensive high-level bilateral dialogue, the United States has sought to resolve significant threat it retains and also encourage China to pursue market-oriented policies and become a more responsible member of the WHO. These bilateral efforts rarely have been unsuccessful, not because of failures by U.S. policy maker, but because reciprocal Chinese policy maker both appear and act uninterested in moving toward a true market economy. We do find it encouraging, however, that the U.S. is not retreating totally into pressure of economic isolationism despite a country wells from President Trump in both his president's rhetoric and his administration's actions to do so, we believe, would only in ensure regressions to the past that would lead uh, catastrophic geopolitical economic outcome. Yet, an insufficient resource question is to motivate behind China behavior in what United States and older belief in non-compliance with U.S. rules and regulations of global commerce. In this some um, in some sir repetitions resonate for this, perhaps having to do with a design by Chinese leader to supplant the U.S. as a global hegemon as take over the world. As some of the right has sermons, or is the issue one of the miscommunication or misunderstanding perhaps best recognized as a crash of culture streaming from the assumption that the rules of the law res resonated as powerful in China as it does in the West? We will return to this question.